On today's video, we are going to be replacing both of those down there, the brake chambers. That one and that one. And we're going to be replacing it with these. Okay, so for all the people that don't know what all this stuff is, these are your brake chambers. Um, you can call these spring chambers because these have a built-in spring that acts as a parking brake or an emergency brake whenever you have an air loss and then they have just your regular brake right here that applies pressure to the brakes whenever you push down on the brake pedal this is your push rod which attaches to the clevis and the clevis attaches to your slack adjuster which is out here that's your slack adjuster and the slack adjuster automatically adjusts as the brakes wear this kit came it comes with these clevises these won't work though so whenever you buy these these uh, brake chambers like i got here but you want to make sure that they give you all this stuff these are the clevises that you have to use and here are the uh, clevis pins and the cotter keys and these come pre-caged meaning they're safe to handle once we get these on the truck we can undo all this and they have a spot for these right here so we're going to take a different route than most guys you see on YouTube. We're going to actually go by the directions. All right, step one. When preparing to install a spring brake chamber, ensure that the unit is fully released, power spring caged, and the service brake push rod is fully retracted to zero stroke position. We got one caged out here. Let's do the other one. So on this chamber, the caging bolt was right there. You can see I have it in there. On this one, it's on the top side. It goes right in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop this cap off. Now we've got our cage and bolt. Stick this in first. Might have to get a flashlight. You can see what I'm talking about right there. That's where that caging bolt's going to fit, and then you're going to turn it. Let's go ahead and stick it in there. Alright, so I ran out of socket, so now I have to use this wrench. If you have a ratcheting wrench, that would be a lot better. This is a three-quarter inch. Still got a ways to go. Okay, I think we finally hit the end. Just got to have patience with these kind of things. And it's a lot easier to release your brakes. Of course, you want to chalk your wheels and tires before you do that. But go ahead and release your brakes. Come back here. Put your cage and bolt in there, and uh, you'll have a head start on it. I... <laughs> I just didn't want to get the truck started up and yeah. But anyway, we got it. Next, we're going to take off these airlines. None of this stuff is included in the directions for the brake chambers. It is only installation directions. Now we need to take these off. All right, so let's go ahead and get these airline fittings off. And this is a swivel connection so you can just kind of lightly crimp the airline because mine wanted to turn with it. That way it doesn't twist the airline when you start cranking on this. There's that. We want to take this off of there. Now we'll do the other three. And one thing I forgot to mention, you want to make sure you mark at least one of those lines. This is a service line. And you'll know it by looking right here. Don't want to get them mixed up. So now we need to get these clevis pins out of there and you can see with mine there's a lot of slack in it there's no pressure you don't want to try to get these out where they have pressure on them everything's freed up go ahead and take this pin out there's that pull that out Come on. Yeah, hell with it. Let's just break it. Skip it pin. And there's that. Pull that pin out. Now this one is fully released. So we can go ahead and take these two bolts off. These are uh, 15 16 and then that thing will be good to take out. Let's 
slack adjuster is right in the way. Yeah, I know guys, I should be using a 7 or a 15 16 wrench. Get tired of crawling out this truck all day long. Oh man, I need that 15 16 ratcheting wrench. Well, you didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? Okay, well that sucked a lot. That took way too much time. When preparing to install the spring brake chamber, make sure it's fully released and that the service brake push rod is fully retracted to the zero stroke. Yeah, we all we made sure of all that. Inspect mounting bracket mounting surface is clean. We did that. Now attach the chamber to the bracket using supplied mounting hardware. Torque two specifications shown below. Mounting hardware 130 to 150 pounds. Okay, so I just realized with these instructions because right here it says to go ahead and mount it and then do all these measurements. Well, you can't mount it with the damn slack adjuster. It's right in the way. So what I had to do was mount it to just one, just use one nut and then put the other one just off to the side like that. Yep, yeah, this is, this is stupid. People wonder why uh, they don't use directions. Well, it's because you run into stupid crap like this. Okay, so what's next? Or measure the distance from the center line of, center line of the S-cam to the center line of the push rod. Okay, S-cam, that's up here. Center line of the push rod, that's right here. Of course, I forgot my tape measure. Center to center. That's about five and three quarters. And what's it say? Uh, step four. The measurement should be equal to the length of the brake adjuster being used. See figure two, which is it's talking about your slack adjuster. And I forgot my measurement. What was it? Something in three quarters. Five and three quarter. I'm gonna pull this stupid thing out. It looks like it's about the same to me. I mean, it's lining right up with the center of the push rod. I'm gonna call that good. Oh, and it says if it's not the same, something's bent or broke. That's pretty obvious. Step five, measure and record the length of the clevis to be used. This measurement should be taken from the center of the clevis pin hole to the bottom of the yoke assembly. See figure three. Does it mean bottom like the very bottom or like, where does it mean? I take things so literally. Does it mean the bottom like right here or right here? I think it means right here, but I'm not sure. All right, I think I might have figured it out. I'm not sure, though. Step 5A. Measure and record the length of the clevis to be used. This measurement should be taken from the center of the clevis pinhole to the bottom of the yoke assembly. See figure 3. You see figure 3? It says step D. What the hell is step D? There's no step D on this entire thing. But I'm thinking when it's saying to the bottom of the yoke assembly, it is talking about that right there what it means is we take a measurement from the center of that to this let's hope this is right one and a quarter one and a quarter okay what's next using a square mark the push rod at the 90 degree setting figure one mark one Right there. That's 90 degrees. Right there. Now what? From this mark, subtract the measurement recorded in number five, the clevis length. Okay, so one and a quarter. Where'd my stupid pin go? Towards the brake chamber. This better be right. I'm be, God, I'm gonna be pissed. One and a quarter. From mark number two, which is the one I just made, measure toward the chamber bracket the distance 
listed in table A, column D for the brake chamber type being installed. We got a 30 30 long stroke. 30, oh, they said column D, 30 long stroke, one and three quarter. Okay, so we measure another one and three quarter that way. Mark the push rod at this point, and that's where we cut it. One and three quarter. That's our cut mark. That seems awfully close. So basically that means, if this is correct, that our clevis is going to be sitting right up against the brake chamber. And this thing has a three inch stroke. So let's see how far that pushes it. One, two, three. To the 90. So it'll push it all the way to here. That's our movement. From there to there. And we'll go right there. Which will still give it plenty of travel. For brake wear and tear and all that good stuff. Retract it, it'll be right there which allows for the truck to freely spin without wearing down on your brakes. Okay, let's cut it. Well, and remember guys, before you make the cut, put your lock nut on there first. Basically, you can just remember the cut is one and three quarters out from the brake chamber. I mean, golly, three quarters. It's three quarters out from the brake chamber. Spin this nut on there. Now we can make our three-quarter mark once again. Three-quarter right there. That doesn't seem right. Well, I did everything just like the instructions say, but as you can see, if I cut it right there, that's not going to let it to where... That's not going to give me enough thread. So we're just going to cut it to where I have enough thread. I don't know what's going on here, guys. I mean, we follow instructions and this happens whatever it's bullshit so that was where we were supposed to cut it but we didn't have enough thread so now we're yeah that much I, I don't know i don't know guys all right time to make the cut there's a reason i said to go ahead and put that jam nut on there before you make the cut because you're going to have to put the clevis on there as well so whenever you spin off that nut it's going to deburr the push rod making it to where the clevis will just go right on there and the instructions want you to do all this after making the cut it says to deburr the cut um i don't have a deburring tool i do have a nut though that does the same job all right we made our mark now we can spin this nut off of there so we can get the clevis on there yep that'll work Spin the clevis on. There it goes. And you can have a little bit sticking out. It even shows on here you can have up to 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we only got like, yeah, we got nothing basically. So we're good there. I want to make sure it's oriented correctly. It's going to go like that. So hell, we got it pretty close right there. Now we can tighten the jam nut back. That's my stupid... Ah, they won't go in there. Gotta have something thinner than those. And of course, my wrench is too thick as well. That's awesome. Okay, we'll have to wait till I install this on there and then we can tighten it up once the rod is extended out. Yeah, that sucks. Let's go ahead and put it up in here. Make sure your air fittings are facing you. Throw a washer on there and a nut. Same for the top. If this stupid thing would get out of the way. Ugh. I need more hands. I mean, this is nuts. back up oh crap I put it in the wrong hole gotta go higher what do I mean by wrong hole well look it's got to go in the upper one 
And these uh, studs on this brake chamber, they're a fight all the way to the end. They, uh, they put a coating on them because they don't want these nuts coming loose. So don't think that you got it cross threaded, threaded or something, you don't. What did that say earlier? Torque it to 150 pounds. Feels like 150 pounds to me. Yep, show sure enough. Get the top one. It's gonna take forever. Step 9A, use the brake adjuster hex clockwise to draw adjuster into the clevis until the pin holes align. Do not physically pull push rod out to align the pin holes. Okay, so what does that mean? First of all, I don't understand why they call it a hex. Uh, hex has six sides. This thing has four. As you can see from the picture here, the piece on the top of the slack adjuster is what they are referring to. And you just turn that clockwise until the adjuster lines up to the pinholes in the clevis. Okay, we finally got that. Let's go ahead and put these stupid pins back on there. This has turned out to be a hell of a job. Okay, you can only put them in one way. Get in there. See what I got to deal with. And before you're doing this, you want to go ahead and apply some anti-seize to those pins. That's just going to make it easier to pull those pins out next time you have to work on the brakes. All right, we got these pins in there. And hey guys, if you uh, if this rod right here is like too long or too short, just pull out this tab right here and you can adjust it up or down. Got the got it pushed through there. Got the little cotter key on there. We got to put this one on this side and then we can get our airlines hooked up and have this side finally finished up. Okay, we're almost done. So we don't need to look at the welded clevis version because ours is not welded, so we can skip over that. Next step, attach airlines, and it says connect service and emergency airlines to the proper airports. Torque 2 specifications in the installation torque value chart shown in instruction 3. Okay, now for the airlines. This is our service. So remember, we marked it. Our service. Put these on there first. Put the elbows on there first. Well, we almost forgot something. <laughs> we got some of this, guys. This is like Teflon uh, paste. Get this at AutoZone. And that way you don't have to get that damn uh, Teflon tape, which we all know is an enormous pain in the ass. Smear it on there. Kaboom. Uh, tighten her up. Get off of there. Try to orient it the way it was before. Right there. Put this crap on here. Then hold this. Tighten that. That's good. Just do them all that way. Get off of there. Why you gotta keep doing me like that? Now that all that is done, we can uncage it. And here's the instructions from the website on how to uncage the chamber. Uh, it's easier to do it with the brakes released. Alright, we got to the end of the cage bolt. Pull it the rest of the way out. And there it is. Pop this back in there just stick your cage bolt right under here because you might need it i know i sure did and just tighten it up all right all right guys we finally got it on there so now we can uh go ahead and tighten up this stop nut right here now that we got room to get to it it's pretty good pretty tight so now we are at the final adjustments and verification. Step A, tighten the brake adjuster until either shoe makes initial contact with the drum. Pull out on this tab. Our brakes are released right now. Turn this top piece here until the brakes are up against the drums. Next step, back off brake adjuster half turn. Okay, that's good. Now you want to back it off a half turn. Right there. Uh, next step, release spring brake chamber by applying 80 to 130 PSI at emergency port. 
verify that there is no interference present and that the push rod is fully retracted into the actuator. Okay, so it's said 80 to 130 PSI. We're a little over 100, so let's go ahead and release our tractor brake. And step outside and see if we have any interference. And as you can see, the push rod is fully retracted and there's no interference between the push rod and anything else. We're almost there guys. Okay, step D. Apply 90 to 100 PSI air pressure at service port. Check that the stroke is within limits. Torque value table above column C, which says two and a half inches. So let's go ahead and apply the brake now and then the push rod will come out and we'll see. You know, if as long as it's not over two and a half inches, we're good. So let's go ahead and pull out on the truck parking brake now. Okay, we're reading right at about one and three quarter, so that's well short of uh, two and a half inches. Okay, last step, step E. Hey, and to all the people who have made it this far and have watched the entire video, thank you for watching this. I really appreciate it. Okay, the angle between the push rod and the center line of the brake adjuster need not be exactly 90 degree with the brake applied. The angle can be anywhere between 85 to 110 degrees for proper brake performance. Go to haldex.com and search for literature L55340W for further details. Okay, that looks really good to me, but we're gonna go ahead and check it just to be sure. It's kinda redneck here, but I don't have anything else, you know. Right there, the center of that. There's the center of our um, brake adjuster. So there to there, we'll see what angle that is. It looks like it's right at 90. All right, guys, we got our angles figured out. I just use this square, it's pretty easy to use. You just put it even down here with where our push rod was at. And then you got your increments here on the square. Pretty simple. So this right here, remember this was our slack adjuster. This down here at the bottom was your push rod. There's the clevis center. So anyway, over here, here's the 85 degree mark. There is my mark. There's the 90 degree mark. And here's your 110. So as long as you fall within the 85 and the 110, you are good to go, boys. <clears throat> Let's wrap it up. Let's call this a day. All right, guys, I guess that's it. If you have any questions, any advice, just drop it in the comments. I'll get back with you. Um, I'm also going to include in the description of this video the decaging instructions. It's like three pages. Most of it is just precautions to take, um, you know, before you do it, while you're doing it. It's pretty simple, really. Hopefully you got some help out of this. I know changing brakes can kind of be an intimidating job. But it doesn't have to be. Um, the instructions were pretty helpful for this. There was a couple steps that didn't really add up, but we got around it. I think the main reason was because the instructions are meant for the clevis they give you that comes with the brake chamber and the clevis that you have to buy, or at least that I have to buy for my truck, is a little bit different. But anyway, we got it and everything adds up. All our checks came up good and i'm pretty satisfied with it uh be sure to like and subscribe guys comment do all them things that all helps this channel helps it grow because i'm trying to get to that thousand subscriber mark boys I'm trying to get monetized <laughs> okay we'll see you on the next one guys i'm out